Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to my channel, The Teaching Show. Uh, please uh, do like, subscribe uh, to this channel and press the bell icon for more updates. So, in this series of videos, we are focusing on problems on thermodynamics. So, continuing with that, I have again selected two more problems in this video. The first problem, it relates to the mixing of uh, air. So I have taken another problem on mixing of ideal gas in my second video which also involved mixing of two ideal gases. In problem two, uh, the process was adiabatic. So the two tanks, they were insulated and they were not exchanging any heat with the surrounding. In this problem, there is a modification. Uh, the heat is allowed to exchange between the two tanks and the surrounding which is maintained at 20 degrees centigrade. So the final temperature of the two tanks, it is coming uh, down to 20 degrees centigrade even after mixing. So that is the difference in this problem. If you have not seen problem number two, I will, uh, problem number, I think that is in video two, I think that's problem number three. Okay, yeah, so second video, problem three. Uh, if you have not seen that video, go and see that so that your concepts are much clearer. Okay, so let's come back to this problem at hand. So, uh, the tank 1, it contains air at 10 degrees centigrade and 350 kilopascal. The volume of the tank is 1 meter cube. The volume of the second tank, we don't know, but the temperature is given as 35 degrees and pressure is 200 kilopascal. Further, it is given that the mass uh, of air in the second tank is 3 kgs. Okay. Now, what we have, uh, what have we have been asked to find out? We have to find out what will be the final pressure in the two compartments, and what is the volume of the second compartment. Okay, so let's attack the problem. Some constants have been given. So this specific gas constant for ideal gas, that is for air, it is given as 0 0.287. So volume of the second tank we can find directly by applying ideal gas equation, that is. V2 is equal to M2 RT2 divided by P2. We just plug in everything which has been given and we find out what is the volume. So volume comes out to be 1.326 meter cube for the second tank. Now, uh, so the total volume of the two tanks now we know is 1 meter cube plus 1.326 meter cube that is equal to 2.326 meter cube. Okay, now let's find out what will be the mass of air in the first tank. Again, to the first tank, we are applying ideal gas law and finding out M1 that is equal to V1 P1 upon RT1. Just plug in all the values and we find out the mass of air in the first tank which is 4.309 kgs. Okay, so the total mass of air now is the mass in tank 1 plus mass in tank 2. So, that is 7.309 kgs. So, final pressure is now very easy to find because temperature of uh, in the final state we know it is 20 degrees centigrade that is 293 Kelvin so we just plug everything in the ideal gas equation and find out the uh, final pressure which comes out to be 264 kilopascals so this is a very straightforward problem we are just using ideal gas equation okay uh, nothing else now uh, I can also ask you how much is the heat which is exchanged between the two tanks and the surrounding? So, let me know in the comment section uh, if you can calculate from the given information, if you can calculate how much heat is exchanged with the surrounding. If yes, you can. Uh, just give me this in comment section. If you cannot calculate it, then tell me the reason why you cannot calculate it. Okay. So, let's go back. Uh, now, let's go to the next problem. Uh, this problem uh, is about uh, different types of work which is being done on this closed system. Okay, so up till now we were not uh, doing any other work other than the shaft work. So let's see first the problem statement. So this is an insulated piston cylinder arrangement. Its initial volume is 5 liters and it contains only saturated liquid. The pressure is held constant at 1675 kilopascal. 
Now this water is stirred by a paddle wheel. So we are doing certain amount of shaft work. This shaft work amounts to about 400 kilojoules during this entire process. Apart from this shaft work, some electrical work is also being done. So in order to do electrical work, a current of 8 ampere flows through the circuit for 45 minutes. Okay, and this resistor is placed in the water. So whatever the zigzag thing which you see over here, that is the resistivity I am showing. Okay, now at the end of the process, one half of the liquid is evaporated. So at the end of the final state of the process is 5 liters of liquid water, which is 50% uh, saturated liquid and 50% saturated vapor. So what will be the uh, quality of steam at the end of the process? X will be equal to 0.5. Okay, uh, so we have been asked what is the voltage of the source. So let's tackle this problem. First of all, we will apply energy balance to the closed system. So that is equal to change in the energy. That is equal to heat exchange plus the amount different type of work uh, which has been done. Okay, so uh, energy is composed of three parts. That is the change in the internal energy plus change in the potential energy plus change in the kinetic energy. Since the cylinder is stationary, so we are assuming that the change in potential and kinetic energy is negligible. So we are just neglecting change delta Pe and delta Ke in this equation. Now cylinder is well insulated, so no heat is being exchanged with the surrounding, so Q is equal to 0. Okay. So what we are left with is then M into delta U that is equal to electric work done plus paddle work done plus there is some amount of PV work which is done. Let us understand why there will be some PV work. So let's go back to the diagram again. What is happening over here? When we are uh, doing some work, okay, so uh, uh, from uh, the saturated liquid which is present, uh, it we are imparting certain amount of energy to it. Where that energy is going? That energy is going into changing the liquid water, saturated liquid water to saturated vapor, which occupies more volume. So what will happen? The volume will change. Okay. Since this is a constant pressure process, so what will happen? This will, this piston will rise. Okay. So, um, or if piston remains stationary, then this uh, basically uh, there will be some pressure change also. Okay. So we are not sure what is happening. Our problem doesn't tell me whether my... Uh, piston is rising or not but since it has been written over here p is equal to constant so we will say that this is a constant pressure process so we are allowing piston to move up in order to maintain constant pressure inside okay so we understand that the volume will increase so there will be certain amount of pv work which will be done okay so that's why i am writing some pv work which is being done okay now uh, pv work i can write mass into del PV okay so now I'm just doing what is I'm combining this PV I'm taking it on this side and combining it with U and writing it in terms of delta H okay so then the change in the enthalpy that is equal to electric work done plus pedal work done now in this reduced form of uh, energy balance what are the unknowns mass is an unknown uh, enthalpy at the final and initial states are unknown and electrical work which is done that is unknown okay paddle work is given it is 400 joules or 400 kilojoules okay so we will find out all these four quantities one by one okay so let's uh, start with finding out first your enthalpy things okay where do you find your enthalpies of course you have to go to the steam table so let's go to the steam table initially water is saturated liquid at 175 kilopascal i have my table i have pasted over here a section of the steam table which i am using so it is in megapascal so 175 kilopascal is basically 0.175 megapascal now i just go and see my table where i find that uh, the, uh, the values listed are for 170 kilopascal and 180 kilopascal so i will have to interpolate between these two values okay so that's what i do i have to calculate first enthalpy at the initial state initial state is just saturated liquid so i will go and use the values of hf that corresponds to your saturated liquid okay 
So I interpolate these two values. The first value is 483.22 at uh, 170 kilopascal, and the value at 180 kilopascal is 490.70. So I will interpolate between these two values, and I find that at 175 kilopascal, uh, the enthalpy value is 487.01 kilojoules per kg. Okay. So uh, one of the unknowns we know now. H1 we know. Now we will find out what is the mass of steam of uh, steam or whatever mass of the water which is there inside the cylinder for that we will use um, the values of specific volume okay so let's find out what will be the specific volume at the initial state okay. initial state is saturated liquid again so we will go to see the values of vf again we will interpolate between these two values at 170 and 180 kilopascal so on interpolation for 175 kilopascal we find that the specific volume is 0 0.001057 meter cube per kg okay so this is my specific volume now i have to find out mass what i will do if i just divide the total volume by the specific volume i will get the mass of the steam so the total volume whether it has been provided to us let's go and see device contains 5 liter of saturated liquid water so initial volume is given okay so initially you have 5 liters so i'm just converting that 5 liters into meter cube because i'm reading the value from steam table in meter cube per kg so i'm converting 5 liters to 0 0.005 meter cube dividing these two taking ratio of these two values which gives me the mass of the liquid water inside the cylinder so that is 4.731 kg now uh, we know that end the, at the end of this process i have half of the saturated liquid which is converted to saturated vapor so i have already discussed that your x will be equal to or the quality of steam is 0.5 so if I have to find out the enthalpy at the final state, I'm going to use this value of x. So I have taught you in previous uh, videos that we calculate the enthalpy of a wet steam by this formula 1 minus x hf plus x into hg. Okay, we have been using this formula till now where we were reading hf and hg values from the steam table. Now there is one more way we can use these values. Let's see this formula. I'm just opening this bracket and writing it as HF minus XHF plus XHG. Since X is common, I'm taking it out of the bracket and just writing HG minus HF. So now my enthalpy for wet steam, it is given by HF plus X into HG minus HF. Now just see these values in the steam table HFG. That is uh, the value which corresponds to Hg minus Hf. That is, this value is given for the enthalpy for the phase change. That is, if your saturated liquid is converting to saturated vapor, okay, at this given pressure, then what will be the enthalpy change? That will be equal to Hfg. So, you can go and uh, verify yourself that Hfg is equal to Hg minus Hf. For all the columns, HFG is equal to HG minus HF. Similarly, uh, steam tables will also give you VFG, where VFG will correspond to VG minus VF. And you will also be you will also see you have UFG values, they correspond to UG minus UF. So instead of using this formula, 1 minus X into HF plus X into HG, you can also use this formula H2 is equal to HF plus X times HFG okay so i'm using this so uh, what i have to do now instead of interpolating uh, between these two values of hf and hg i'm just interpolating between these two values hfg so i get uh, this value of 2213.1 i'm interpolating between these two values which are listed over here and hf again i'm interpolating between these two values and writing 487.01 which i have already calculated so putting everything in this formula, I get the value of H2. Now, uh, I know all the unknowns. What is the electric work which is done? That is equal to V into I into delta T. Okay. So I current, I know time for which this current flows is 45 minutes multiplying it with seconds. So I get 2700 seconds. So my electric work which is done, that is equal to 
uh, 2700 into 8 uh, into V. Okay, so this is my electric work. I just put everything in the uh, energy balance now H2, H1, WE, and WP, and M, and then only. Okay, so uh, we have written electrical work as V into I into delta T. So if you put the values of uh, delta t that is uh, 45 minutes into 60 that is equal to 2700 seconds uh, into i which is 8 ampere then we get electric current in terms of the uh, value of v as 21600 v so uh, we just put everything in this energy balance equation now we know m h2 h1 we have read from the steam tables wp is given as 400 uh, we we have calculated in terms of the voltage of the source so we just put everything in the energy balance and this is a single equation in one known one unknown that is v so we can calculate the voltage of the source that comes out to be 223.9 volts okay now let's proceed to third problem for today uh, this is problem 14 uh, in the overall series uh, this problem deals with the polytropic compression of argon where the uh, polytropic compression, I am saying that then this process follows P into V raised to 1.2 that is equal to constant. So N is basically 1.2. The initial state is given as that the argon is at 10 degree centigrade and 120 kilopascal and it is being compressed to 800 kilopascal in a piston cylinder device shown over here. Now we have been asked to find out what is the work done to compress this argon and the heat transferred during this process. The properties of argon which we require uh, in order to solve this question are R and CV whose values are listed over here. Okay, so let's directly tackle the problem. Since this is a closed system, the energy balance takes this form delta U is equal to Q plus W. Again, we are assuming that the changes in kinetic and potential energies are negligible. And since argon we are taking as an ideal gas, so I can write TU is equal to CV dt. Or in the integrated form, I am writing delta U is equal to M into CV into T2 minus T1. That is the difference in the temperatures at the initial state and the final state. Okay, so first we will calculate what is the work which is required for this polytropic compression so i am going to use this formula you have might have seen such type of formula for adiabatic compression where your uh, process takes place uh, and the uh, equation for the process is given as p into v raised to gamma equal to constant where gamma is the ratio of cp and cv so uh, based on that equation we write the similar equation for work done in a polytropic process and it is given by this formula where not, uh, we have changed only the uh, gamma we have replaced by n okay so n in this process is given as 1.2 and so i am putting everywhere 1.2 final pressure is 800 initial pressure is 120 so just plugging in all the values i find out the amount of work which is required for this compression so the work which is required comes out to be 109.5 kilojoules per kg. Now uh, let's find out what is, will be the temperature in the final state. So again I am using P into V raised to N that is equal to constant. I am using ideal gas law uh, to eliminate V and write this equation in terms of T. Okay, so doing that, you can go and try on yourself. Uh, doing that, what we get is T2 is equal to T1 into P2 by P1 raised to N minus 1 upon N. We know the values of P2, P1, T1. I am just plugging all these values and finding out the final temperature, which is 388.2 Kelvin. Okay, so once I have calculated my um, final temperature, I know my initial temperature, CV is given. Work done uh, is calculated as 109.5 kilojoules per kg. So, I am just plugging everything in the energy balance equation and finding out Q. Q comes out to be minus 76.6 kilojoules per kg. Since this Q has a negative sign, what does it mean? That this amount of heat is lost to the surrounding. So, this is the heat which is rejected. Okay. So, so we have solved this problem. It's very easy. Okay, you can uh, do it on your own and see whether your answer matches with my answer. Uh, thanks for watching and do uh, 
like and subscribe to my channel and please leave a comment if you want if you have any doubt or if you have any queries if or if you want me to make videos on uh, certain specific uh, topics so please leave a comment and thanks for watching